Any other announcements?
was holy. This day, we wave branches. Your praises, your help. Those are shouts from the streets. We gather to pray today. Hear us, O oh Lord. It is in Jesus' name we pray.
let us pray for illumination. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty, quite within us every voice but your own. Speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show Christ's love and lives given to your servants. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a coat, the fold of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him, and that followed sh shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Then Jesus entered the temple, drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise for yourself? He left them went out to the city of Bethany and spent the night there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you now take a moment and join me in the litany of thanksgiving found in your printed bulletin? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let the people say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Find the festival procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are our God. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Hear the good news. God is good. Steadfast love endures forever. 
And as we receive that good news today, I invite you to join in that good news, spreading it among those who are here, hearing the peace of Christ given to us. The peace of Christ be with you. Please pass that same peace. Please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith. <laughs> Presbyterians can, can do different things as long as it's in the bulletin. <laughs> we can do this. Today our affirmation of faith comes from the Confession of 1967, and I invite you to join along with me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what is it that we believe? In Jesus of Nazareth, True humanity was realized once for all. Jesus, a Palestinian Jew, lived among his own people and shared their needs, temptation, joy, and sorrow. He expressed the love of God in word and deed and became a brother to all kinds of sinful men and women. But his complete obedience led him into conflict with his people. His life and teaching judged their goodness, religious aspirations, and national hopes. Many rejected him and demanded his death. In giving himself freely for them, he took upon himself the judgment under which everyone stands convicted. God raised him from the dead, vindicating him as Messiah and Lord. The victim of sin became victor and won the victory over sin and death for all. Amen.
Will the children join me up front? Good morning. Hi. All right. So today was nothing special, right? Totally normal service? No? What did we do differently today? Well, what did we do? Okay, and what did we do? Were we all like sad? And yeah. Okay, so what, was it kind of like a... Yes. Anybody else ever been in a parade? Has anybody? You have? You've been in a parade? You've been in one softball? True, you've been in a Mardi Gras parade. I was a majorette in high school, so I was in lots of parades, marching. So are parades usually like sad and no, they're usually pretty happy, right? So today is Palm Sunday and do you know how it started? Right, so it started kind of with a parade and usually parades are about something happy. Is this parade necessarily, is it, did it end very happily? Wasn't this like the start to Holy Week, right? It kind of started with a parade and shouts and hosanna and excitement, and then it ended with Jesus on the cross on Friday, right? But then what happens on Sunday? He rose again, so it does end up being happy. So I wanted to read y'all today. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so I wanted to read y'all from the children's Bible. You just heard the story, but this one's a little bit your stand me this morning. We were looking for our children's Bible, and I know a lot of them that actually had the Palm Sunday story in it. And then Shelby noticed um, the cover of this book is Palm Sunday, is the, is the parade. So I'm going to read from you really quickly the story from the children's Bible. So if y'all want to look and listen, here I'll even show you the picture on that one. You can see Jesus riding in on the donkey with all the palms, right? Okay, so it starts. The city of Jerusalem was full of people. Jews from near and far were arrive, arriving for the week for the Passover festival. Jesus and his disciples came as far as Bethany. Go into the village, Jesus had told two of his disciples. Bring me the young donkey you will find tied up near his mother. If anyone asks what you're up to, tell them that the master needs him and will soon send him back. So the disciples did just as Jesus said. And when the bystanders heard that it was Jesus who wanted the donkey, they gladly let him go. When they had brought him to Jesus, the disciples spread their coats on the donkey's back to make a saddle. The donkey was not frightened when Jesus climbed onto his back, even though no one had ever ridden him before. He stepped proudly forward, and the pilgrims who had journeyed with Jesus began to jostle and cheer as they all began the steep climb into the city. Long ago, the prophet Zechariah had foretold that one day the true king would come, not galloping on a war horse, but riding a peaceful donkey. Jesus was showing all to see was his king. Entering his capital. Hosanna, that's right. Just now, God, the long promised king has come. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. At last, the little donkey with the king on his back enters the streets of Jerusalem. So let's start our holy week with a prayer together. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, for happiness and palms, and for getting to be aware of your presence. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So do you remember your first parade? Think back. What stood out? I grew up in a really small town, and so all the parades we had were always pretty small, and they were always made up of people that I knew. I knew everybody on every float. They weren't really floats, they were the back of trucks and tractors, four-wheelers and bicycles. And my 
number eight. Until the first time I saw the Macy's Day Parade, and then I saw what a true parade was. Of course, that is a parade full of a great many floats, of real floats, of people who have worked hard, not just jumped in the back of their truck. And of course, there is the one who comes at the end of that parade that brings in a new season, a new season that is starting. Parades are special. They mark moments. They mark the end of seasons. They mark the beginning of seasons, whether you're celebrating a national championship War heroes coming home, astronauts returning from space. There are a great many reasons to have parades. But I love the fact that the church has a parade every year. Every single year we gather here and we pick up these palm branches and we reenact something that is special. It means something to us. From the time that we're little children until the time we have grown old, we can wave these palm branches marking this season. The end of something, the beginning of something, and crying out. It is a bit of what my New Testament professor Stan Saunders used to call prophetic theater. We're reenacting something that we believe, something we stand for, something that we want to tell over and over and over again. And it begins with the words, not of Merry Christmas or congratulations or welcome home. It always is marked by Hosanna. Save me. Hosanna. And each of us grab palm branch and we stand on our tippy toes. Stretch out, then stand and watch out. Save me, son of David, save me. We reenact that event that happened over almost 2,000 years ago where those who stood on the streets outside of the great holy city of Jerusalem shouted their plea as the parade passed into the city. A people there in Jerusalem gathered in making the city's population swell through the season of Passover encounter the prophet who come from the outskirts, who came from the desert. A people encounter Jesus in this street theater of palm waving and cheers, this street theater that we reenact each and every year. His actions, their presence, these words, they all mean something to us today as they did so long ago. One of the things that they did so long ago and one of the things that they still shout out from us today is a way that it, it critiques the world as it is. In fact, many theologians have noticed this event is a way of theater, this street performance that in certain light will mock a parade that is happening on the other side of the city. It mocks the empire with its broad symbolic war. The end of this Palm Sunday parade, Jesus puts flesh to the scriptures, becoming the scene that is foretold centuries earlier, entering a holy city on a lonely beast of burden, saving the people from captivity, their hope, their salvation, comes riding on a donkey. His action here is a purity of the empire and it critiques those who are in charge. It is of empire and religious establishment. 
establishment See, the empire does liberate from a dominant period with shields and spears. And the temple, the temple priests, they don't walk in the streets with dust flying up. They segregate the sacred and scoff at the secular. People meet Jesus in this prophetic theater, longing for him to be the one to finally come to save them from the oppression and the corruption that they see every day and every year as they come to the city at this time. It is a beautiful dream. It is a parade that they all want. A parade that we all want. That's why we recreate it each year, hoping that this, this year will be the year that it doesn't, that the palm keep waving, and that it doesn't bring about our failure, that it doesn't bring about the death. However, this parade will fail. The people fail. We too will fail. Each and every palm-waving Sunday, no matter how loudly we shout the Hosanna, the parade will fail. The crowd gathered today will gather again shortly on the streets as a mob, and they will cry something different. Hosanna will become kill him. A holy week will change them as it changes us. Unless we think we are any better, that our cries will be more faithful, that we could carry the palm branches just a little bit longer than our forebears, I invite you to look carefully at how our scripture text ended today. The encounter Jesus has with his people. Especially in three specific ways. First, Jesus completely overturns their economic life in their city. Now, the crowds would probably still be cheering as Jesus turns over the tables and drives out the money changers and the schemers and those looking to take advantage of the system and the people. But those same people who cheer and wave the palm branches start to give pause when he next says, give Rome what is theirs. He instructs them to give all they have to the poor and follow him. He says things like, do not store up for yourself wealth where moth and rust consume. He lifts up the actions of the widow woman who comes to the temple to give the last coins that she possessed. His system demonstrates shared bread and the common cause of washing one another's feet. Do we still wave the branches when we finally come to realize that he has not brought an army with him and he has no strength and no force? Where is our security? Even when he tells his own to put down their weapons. When we wake up the next morning after the parade route and we realize that the strong and the rich rule the world. It's always been that way. And it always will be. That next morning after the parade will we wake up to the horrifying fact that his way will get us all killed. So when this street theater is done and our waving hands are still, can we still believe that he will save us? Or will we cry and kill him? Second, Jesus overturns the traditions and the customs. Many of the things that make up the identity of the people. Jesus has challenged them one by one. Jesus challenges the establishment, challenges their validity, their truth. 
and not in criminal shame. Says, yeah, but a rough, almost shame of turning over everything. Jesus says things like, this temple will be destroyed. These priests and sacrifices are insufficient. What you do does not please God. The way you have structured your nation, your world, that is not the kingdom of God. The harm that you do as the church and a nation may not be done in the name of God. The sin that the priests and the politicians, the zealots and the nationalists, will put down their palms. Their hands will be still and their cries will change. No longer save me. The cry will change to kill me. Lastly, Jesus overturns all of the social structures. He will eat with those who have been kicked out of town. He touches the diseased and the segregated. He shows that God loves the groups that we don't even like. He lifts up our enemies as the heroes of the and he tells us to forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and when we cannot or simply will not love our neighbor or love ourselves, our palm branches will fall to the ground. And when we neglect to show love, when we cling to our grudges, when we puff ourselves up with superiority, we cry out loudly, kill him. When we encounter Jesus, I mean, really listen, truly hear the message that he proclaims. How can we still shout out Hosanna? For each and every one of us will fail. We will drop our branches to the ground and we will join the mob. And before you balk at this, remember, even those who were closest to Jesus, those who knew Him best, ran. They could not. They would not. We are no better. In our encounters with Jesus, not only do we fully know who this Jesus is, but Jesus knows us as well. Jesus knows us in our encounter along the road, even as we wave our branches. Before he leaves Bethphage, he knows our weakness, our unwillingness to bear a cross, to sacrifice all, to endure humiliation and death, to become the kingdom of God. Christ knows all this to be true. And yet He rests on a fold. Encountering us as the Messiah we want. Knowing fully that He is the Messiah we need. Because of that, we will not want Him when this parade ends. Jesus knows fully, and yet will ask, Father, forgive them. They don't understand. Today, the palms of our parade will wave and cheer, will shout and cry out, but soon, Soon those same palms will turn to the ashes that mark our own death. Because our good news, our strength, our salvation is more, it's bigger than our imagination, better than our hopes, and deeper than the desires and the commitments of even a parade. Jesus comes to Jerusalem. 
the marks of Cain and who we are. Today we turn to the cross and we still shout Hosanna. Hosanna, save us. Join me now in our litany from Psalm to the Passion. On this day of songs and celebration, Jesus continues his journey with God. On the south of the Mount Olives, Jesus prepares to travel through the valley of heartache. streets of Jerusalem, Jesus hears the cries of those who adore him. Hear now these words from the Gospel of Matthew. When the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him, they stripped him, put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him, took the reed, and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away to crucify him. Heavy squabbles don't belong in such a story of high drama and sacrifice, but they are there just as in our lives, along with the other ways we fail to be to the... Please join me as we pray. Sustainer of the weary, we know how we sang for joy when Christ came into our lives and how we have not followed him when he meets us on this journey. We have hidden our faces from the pain and suffering of our world. We have turned a deaf ear to the cries for the hungry, the oppressed. We trust in the slick promotions of the world and not in your words that can transform our lives. Forgive us, steadfast God, and shine your face upon us. Help us to have the same mind as Christ so we would know your promises. Help us to have the same heart as Christ so we might serve your children. Help us to have the same spirit as Christ, so we might go wherever you lead us. God does not turn away when we fail to be faithful. God does not reject us when we do not trust fully. God continues to love us, to forgive us, to restore us. It is God who helps us. It is God who saves us. It is all we need or ever will need. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 
reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. faithful obedience to God, who has given us so much. Let us return a portion of our gifts to the Lord's service, and our tithes and our tithes.
faithful God, you love us. Despite all of our failures, you love us. You come to us and you save us throughout our cries that we do not understand. Most holy God, we pray that you accept these gifts, the fruits of our labor, that they may be used for your service today and all days. For it is in Christ's name we make our prayer. Amen. Our final hymn is changed. Please turn to hymn 223. 223, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. 223. day where love and sorrow mingle. We come in a parade and we leave in a mob. Hosanna. Lord save us. Go now in the name of God the Father, God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit, the three in one, this day and forevermore, go in peace. Amen. Amen.